This video is sponsored by Pins and Needles Kits. Hi everyone, I'm Whitney and I post a new tutorial every single Wednesday to help sewers of all skill levels learn new projects and techniques. This week I'll be showing how to create the Cheyenne rope bag using the pattern from Serendipity Studios. Now I got the pattern sent to me along with all of the supplies that is needed to make it in my Pens and Needles Premium Box Kit for the month of February. So with Pens and Needles Kits you get every single thing you need to make an entire project sent to your front door each month and it is just a fun service to be a part of. I will have a link down below to their website as well as for a coupon code if you want to check it out and get a discount on your first month's box. So let's get right into seeing what came in the February premium box. The kit came with the project pattern, hardware for the bag, two yards of beautiful fabric, two zippers, a spool of matching thread, fusible interfacing, and fusible foam stabilizer. I did want to mention up front that this pattern was a bit unusual in the fact that it didn't have all of the pieces that needed to be cut out listed right at the start of the pattern. So as you go along in the pattern, it does give you additional things that needed to be cut out. Um, so this is a little bit differently than what other patterns that I have followed before have done. Um, also a few of the directions were a little bit complicated to understand, but don't worry, I'm going to show you exactly how to do it in this video. So I just wanted to mention that with any pattern you make you always want to read all of the directions ahead of time and make sure you know what is coming up. But Pens and Needles kits definitely had me covered. They had more than enough fabric in the kit as well as, like I mentioned earlier, all the supplies and everything, which is so, so nice. And um, yeah, let's get right into sewing the project. The pattern suggests tracing the pattern pieces onto freezer paper and using those to cut the foam down to size. So I did that, then tried to carefully iron the freezer paper to the foam. Then carefully cut around each piece. Use the pattern to mark where the zippers will be inserted later. Peel the pattern paper away and cut the zipper opening out of the foam. Now it's time to add on the fabric. Place the foam with the fusible side up and lay your main fabric good side facing up on top. You can feel along the edges of the foam to make sure the fabric is laying straight and smooth. Then use your iron with a little steam to fuse the fabric to the foam for the bag front, back, pocket body, pocket tab, and the strap tab. Then flip each piece over and trim the fabric right along the edges of the foam. Repeat the same process with the fusible interfacing and the lining pieces. The only difference is you don't cut the zipper openings in the lining pieces. Here are all the pieces the pattern has had us prep up until this point, and it's time to start sewing. 
Use the pattern to mark the dark placements on the external pocket. Then fold the piece between each of the angled dark lines and sew from the base of the line up to the dot. Do this to create all four darts and repeat for the pocket lining as well. Here is how it should look. Use the pattern again to mark where the magnetic snap needs to be placed. Then with the snap centered over the dot you just marked, also mark where the prongs are. Use an X-Acto knife to cut a small slit where each prong will be inserted. Insert the prongs through the two slits that were cut and add the backing piece. Then press the prongs down in opposite directions. Place the pocket lining and outer right sides together lining up all the edges. Clip the layers together and sew around the outer edges leaving a small opening to turn through in the top straight edge. Trim the top corners and cut tiny triangles out of the curved edge to lessen the bulk. Turn the pocket right sides out through the opening in the top. Tuck the raw edges of the opening inside then sew a top stitch along the top edge. Pin the pocket onto the bag body using the pattern as a guide and sew around the sides and bottom to attach it into place. Next, get the pocket flap lining piece and add the other half of the snap the same way as before. Place the flap lining and outer right sides together and sew around the outer edge leaving a small opening in the top side for turning it through. Trim the seam allowances like shown on the pocket and turn through the opening. Make sure to poke out the corners and tuck the edges of the opening inward. Then top stitch all the way around to finish the flap. Attach the snap pieces together and make sure the flap is straight. Then sew another top stitch along the straight edge to attach the flap into place. Cut a piece from your lining fabric measuring 8.5 by 11 inches and position it 6 inches from the top on the bag back. Add a couple of pins to hold the piece in place, then flip the entire thing over and sew just inside the rectangle cut in the foam. As you can see, there is a rectangle of stitching right inside the hole in the foam. Use a pair of scissors or a rotary cutter to carefully cut a line down the center of the rectangle you just sewed. Then cut snips at angles from the end of the line to the corners of the rectangle. Cut right up to the stitching line but do not cut your stitches. Then push the entire pocket piece through the opening that you just cut. Take some time to smooth it out so it lays as nicely as possible around the opening. If you are getting a lot of gathering around the short sides of the opening, you may need to go back and make sure your corner cuts went all the way up to the stitching line. When you are happy with how it looks, lay a zipper down right sides up and place your bag piece on top. Line it up so the zipper tab is at one end and the zipper teeth are centered in the opening. Sew around the rectangle to attach the zipper and hold the zipper lining back into place. I stitched around mine twice for extra detailing. Flip the piece over and trim off any excess zipper tape. Fold the long end of the pocket lining up so it is even with the top and sides and has a fold along the bottom. Then sew around the three open sides to form the pocket. You will need to move the main part of the bag out of the way as you sew, so you are only sewing the pocket lining fabric. 
It takes a little bit of maneuvering, but as long as you are careful, you can do it. And there you have it, a fully functioning zippered pocket. Lay this bag piece right sides down and the corresponding lining piece on top with the right sides facing up. Add craft clips to hold the two together, then sew all the way around the outer edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. Sew up each of the triangle cutouts to create darts. This gives the bag all of its dimensions so the bag stays in its nice rounded shape. Repeat for all the darts on the lining piece as well. Place the lining piece over the outer piece with the right sides together. Match up all the edges and use craft clips to hold the two in place. Then sew just inside the rectangle that has been cut out the same way we did for the other zipper. Cut the rectangle open like before with a long slit in the middle, then angled cuts toward the corners. Then push the lining through the opening. After you get the lining laying nicely, place the zipper on the lining side and sew around the rectangle the same way as before. I sewed around mine twice because I love how that looks. Trim off the excess zipper inside. Then sew all the way around the outer edge to attach the lining to the outer. It may not line up perfectly all the way around because of the thickness of the foam, so just let any excess lining hang over the edges and trim it after you sew. Cut two pieces three by four inches and interface them. Place right sides together and sew along the long side with a half inch seam allowance. Open the piece up and iron the seam allowance open. Fold each side of the piece in toward the center seam and iron flat. Then fold along the seam line and iron again. Sew four lines of stitching down the length of the piece to secure the open edges and to give it a nice look. Feed the swivel clasp onto the piece, fold it in half, and sew the two short ends together. Use the markings on the pattern to sew the tab into place. At this point, the directions showed how to make and attach tabs next to the zipper, um, but I didn't want them on my bag. I just wanted a different look, and so I skipped this step, but if you're following along with the pattern, it's done basically the same way as the swivel clasp tab that we just did, um, so it should still be easy to follow along with the pattern to make them. For the straps, cut two pieces measuring three and a half inches by the width of the fabric and five strips from the interfacing three and a half inches wide. Iron the interfacing on the back side of the straps. Interfacing only comes in 20 inch widths, so you will need to combine a few interfacing pieces to make it long enough for each fabric strip. Place the two interface strap pieces right sides together and sew along one long side with a half inch seam allowance. Open it up and iron the seam open. Then turn one long edge inward and press with the iron. Fold along the seam and make sure the strap will fit on the D-ring from the seam edge to the folded edge. If it fits, then go ahead and fold in the last remaining side and press. Mm -hmm. 
Sew four stitching lines down the length of the strap. Place the strap on the strap tab and stitch along the end to attach. Place the other strap tab on top, right sides together, and sew around leaving the bottom edge open. Trim down the seam allowance to reduce bulk. Flip the tabs right side out and smooth everything flat. Then top stitch all the way around. Center the raw edge of the tab with the top of the bag and sew with a 3 8 inch seam allowance to attach. Unzip the zipper on the bag front and place the bag back right sides together with it. Make sure the strap and tab are tucked inside and line up the edges. Add craft clips to hold them together. Then sew all the way around with a half inch seam allowance. Be very careful while doing this because the foam and seams can be pretty thick in spots. Trim the seam allowance down to about a quarter inch. At this point you will need to create some bias tape to finish off the inside of the bag where there is the raw edges on the seam allowances and I created mine making continuous bias tape using the tutorial that I did a while back and I will have that video linked right up here in the information icon and I believe I started with a 15 inch square and it made more than enough to finish off this project. Turn one short end of your bias tape in by about a half inch, then fold the bias binding in half along the long side and press. Place the bias tape with the raw edge lined up with the raw edges of the bag and sew to attach all the way around. Bring the folded edge of the bias tape around to the other side and top stitch it in place so it encases all the raw edges inside. Reach in through the open zipper and turn the entire bag right sides out. Feed the strap onto the slider up, then over the middle bar, through the D-ring, then back up and over the bar of the slider underneath where it went through first. Clip the corners off the unfinished end of the strap and fold over twice. Sew the folded end to itself to secure the end of the strap and finish off your bag. I really enjoyed making this bag. It had several techniques that I had never tried before. So while I was getting to enjoy this awesome kit service and learn new techniques, I hope I was also able to teach some of those techniques to you all as well so we all benefit from this video. Don't forget that coupon code that I mentioned earlier. If you want to try out pins and needles kits, definitely use the coupon code to save a couple of bucks. And if you want to see the behind the scenes of all that went on while I was filming this video, because what I didn't show was all of the mishaps I was having with my sewing machine. I broke a needle. I had the belt snap on my vintage sewing machine. I had the presser, the knee pedal that I used to control my machine instead of a foot pedal break all while I was filming this tutorial. It had nothing to do with the tutorial, but it just all happened to happen at once. And um, I've been doing week in the life vlogs, so I kind of vlogged all of it while it was going on. So if you want to check that video out and see some of the behind the scenes stuff that happened during the week that I was filming this tutorial, you can check out that video right over here to the side. And it is on my personal channel, which is called Whitney's Tiny Life. It's where I post just fun videos. And if you want to subscribe to that channel, you can do so by clicking my picture that is right down there. I would really appreciate it. And until next time, happy sewing.